Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fresh Baked Disney, the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. I am your host, David, and I am out in front of Adventureland, as promised. We're going to do a, a really quiet, hopefully lovely walking tour of Adventureland. We're going to look at uh, some of my favorite spots, some of my favorite things to observe and notice in the land of adventure. We'll be looking at Jungle Cruise, Indiana Jones, the Treehouse, and more. So, let's go. Now, I have to say that I feel like Adventureland has... I don't know if it's my favorite. It could be my favorite entrance and also my least favorite in some ways, and we'll get into that. But I love the way you enter Adventureland because it's it's the very definition of Disney's expertise in immersing you into a theme effortlessly and immediately. Because you go from, you know, turn of the century Main Street, Jolly Holiday, into a jungle. Right here, there's a line. There's a literal line, and you don't even really notice it because it starts before you actually cross the threshold into Adventureland. You'll notice, for example, on your right, you've got this, uh, you know, the, the, the river, I guess, the, you know, this is the dark water system that starts up in uh, Fantasyland. But they, before you've advent you know, entered the land, this river is themed to an adventure. We're not in Adventureland yet, but it's themed like a jungle. Uh, at least it's starting to approximate it anyway, uh, with, the, you know, with the choices that they make with, with the foliage and, uh, you know, some of the stuff that they're doing right here. And then obviously the way that they change the building, and it's the same building for, for Tiki Room, Jolly Holiday, and Tropical Hideaway. They all operate from the same, the same structure, which is fantastic. Uh, and then they just kind of, you know, flip over from one to the other. It's, it's pretty ingenious how they do that. Uh, we won't be going into the Tiki Room today, but uh, I just wanted to observe that because we're starting to feel that here. Now, actually, back in the day, also, they don't have this anymore. There used to be a, a barking bird uh, out in front of Adventureland who would basically yell at guests <laughs> before you go in, which I would really like to have back one of these days. Uh, also, and before we go in, still not in yet, what you're seeing right here, this little, I don't even know what its function is, why it's set up the way it is with the, with the, the little lane. <laughs> they, they somehow create a lane, like a fast pass lane or, or a, you know, a high occupancy vehicle carpool type lane. Uh, most people use it for parking their strollers now these days, but they're getting rid of this, as I understand it. They're going to get rid of, well, they're going to get rid of that right there. Uh, look for that soon, as I understand it. This will be amended to just, you know, make it wide. Because it does, it does create, this is one of the reasons why this is my least favorite entrance is because it creates a very bad choke point. A lot of traffic comes through here on Adventureland and it narrows considerably quickly right here. Narrows and, the, and that narrowing continues as, it, as we try to get into Adventureland proper. Uh, and it doesn't help also that you've got this queue out here from the Tiki Room, which is why they've got two entrances and they also sell, I mean for Dole Whips, uh, why they have two entrances for Dole Whips and they also sell them now at Tropical Hideaway. They're trying to get people off of here if they can at all, you know, if at all possible. Now this right here is a thing that I think that a lot of people overlook or take for granted because look at, look at the pace at which <laughs> they're gonna go right by. Because you know what, they've, they've got some place to be. They've gotta go to Indiana Jones or, uh, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean if this is the way you're trying to get to the Pirates or even how to match for that matter. This is a great way to get to Northern Square. Um, Nobody's, look at how fantastic they have designed. This is just a bathroom, you guys. This is a bathroom. This little rock work here. There's an actual little stream. Uh, you can see like a little mini waterfall flowing down it. Beautiful. And that's what I love about the early design work is how complete they did everything. Uh, you compare that to, you know, I don't know, it's difficult to compare it to Tomorrowland, but you don't get this in Tomorrowland, but you can't because it's Tomorrowland. It's, that's not, it's, it's not, uh, the land itself isn't conducive to this kind of theming, so it's a little unfair, but still, I, I do feel very much immersed in a adventure jungle, you know, setting. Yeah. Fantastic. 
see a lot of this right here too, aging it. And we're gonna see a lot of that in Galaxy's Edge, by the way, even to, a, I think, an even better degree. They're gonna do a, a better job at it of aging uh, all the structures in Galaxy's Edge. See that? No, it's, it's like two people. At least right here, even. This is fantastic. Actually, I could do this all day. I could show you guys the adventure land all day about how perfectly themed it is, how perfectly designed it is. You know, just the... expert, right? Even the music, the loops they play, the musical loops, what you're hearing is a radio that they're playing inside the queue of Jungle Cruise. The, the, it's a radio that people would be listening to in the 1920s, which I think, whenever Indiana Jones took place, that's what this is. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but um, it's, so it's the, it's the Jungle Cruise skippers that are listening to the radio, and that's what we're hearing from time to time. This is one of my favorite things about Adventureland. From time to time, you'll hear a cast member come out and say something funny. You know, Jungle Cruise, he's like, uh, my, one of my favorites is, we apologize to everyone here, but unfortunately, the Jungle Cruise is fully operational today. <laughs> I, <laughs> every time I hear them do that bit, I laugh my butt off. I love it. Before we uh, keep going down Adventureland, one thing I want to talk about is Tropical Hideaway. And obviously, we did a review on this place not long ago, and uh, I love it. I love Tropical Hideaway, but not necessarily for the food. I, I just feel like they did an amazing job of incorporating this into the existing Adventureland, you know, arena, as it were. Before, when this, when this was Aladdin's Oasis, it was, this was close. A lot of folks didn't even know that Aladdin's Oasis existed. It was so secret because they, the way they set it up, you couldn't see, you couldn't tell what it was. You had to go through a thing to get in there. And inside, it was lovely. Aladdin's Oasis was very, you know, good looking inside. Uh, lots of seating areas right here. You could sit just like you can today. And there was a Cave of Wonders right about there where uh, Rosita is. Uh, and it was nice inside, but nobody knew that it was there. And it, it didn't fit. That Aladdin sort of theme didn't fit inside Adventureland because almost everything else in the land has that same jungle theme. Not, you know, it's not that Aladdin isn't a, a an adventure type theme. And I mean, if it fits anywhere, Aladdin fits here. But everything else in Adventureland has the same adventure, you know, or uh, jungle type theme. The gift shops, even the you know the, the tree houses, the jungle. Uh, you know, all the gift shops, it, it, it all is, obviously Jungle Cruise, so this fits perfectly, and it is an extension of the Jungle Cruise, which is even better. There's Rosita, she's staring at me. Dude, I think she, yeah, she literally just clock, started clocking. What, what are you looking at, Rosita? Standing on top of a box of bird seed. She's stuck. Dude, she's tracking me. Just like a just like a bust in the haunted mansion. But if you, you can get this table, I'm standing next to a table right now. You can get a table on the water right here and watch or listen to Jungle Cruise boats come in. You can't hear them. I've tried because it's usually too noisy. Oh. Especially when she's jabbering about. It's too noisy generally most times uh, in the tropical highway to hear because a lot of chatter gets chatter. So you can't hear the boats coming in. That's a uh, spear. <laughs> I forgot his name. He did the bit uh, when the uh, natives are attacking. You know how they do this. Spear, 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 spear. He just said spear one time. You want more, you say? <laughs> well, I, okay, check this out. I got lots more for you.
service Bengal barbecue restaurant gets the works. It gets the best theming I've seen for a quick service restaurant anywhere in the park. show you the, the Dominguez tree. Bitchland has a buttload of history too. And I've done a video on this tree right here, this one right there. That tree is obviously older than Disneyland. Uh, it's the Dominguez tree and was here as part of the Dominguez home, the Dominguez property which Disney bought in order to build Disneyland. Disneyland is built on you know, a very large uh, acreage of property that was owned by the Dominguez family. And one of the conditions of that sale that the Dominguez family made for Disney was that they keep this tree. It meant something to them, obviously. Now, this isn't exactly where it was they moved it. I think, I want to say that it was where Pirates is now. Uh, that's where the tree was and the home was proper because the tree was right in front of the house, but they had to move it for you know other reasons. But they, they kept the tree. It's still here. It has a very prominent uh, uh, place in Adventureland. Jungle Cruise, let's take a break, you guys. Let's take a break from our videography <laughs> and go for a ride on the Jungle Cruise, which Peter, too, is about to do. We just ran into him. I didn't film it. I got my own personal handshake with him. Uh, but he's about to ride Jungle Cruise. Maybe we'll see him while we're in the queue here. But uh, I love the Jungle Cruise queue. It is one, you know, it's funny. When I, I, I let's made a joke that uh, our Adventureland is the what, studio apartment of Disneyland because I was we were in Disneyland Paris and their their Adventureland is enormous. It is just the biggest thing, but it, 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 I mean it is big. It's bigger than ours for sure. But Adventureland is deceptively big. It feels small because there's just that one sliver of walkway, you know, just to our left out here in the land proper, which is that one sliver of walkway, and it's very cramped because there's nowhere else ready to go. So it feels small when you walk through it. But then once you get into the Jungle Cruise and into the queue for Indiana Jones and up the tree, Tarzan's Treehouse, it has plenty of space for you to really feel and take in the Adventureland experience. It is one of my most favorite things, going through and feeling part of you know, that jungle atmosphere. I mean, it's very convincing. For Prince Albert School. The Jungle Botanical Society will be hosting a programming class secret so far
enjoying this Adventureland tour so much that I'm going to do more than I had expected, which means that I'm going to have to break this up into two videos. So we'll take a break and come back tomorrow. So stay tuned for more from Adventureland. Until then, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to our channel. Like this video, share it with your friends. We'll see you next time. For speak. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!